sperm and sperm are the two roots. Sperm means seed. We talked about that a little bit because we talked about the spores are not seeds. So when we're talking about seeds here, these are multicellular. <coughs> they are reproductive structures, but they've got a very complex structure, which we'll review again on the next slide where we draw our seed structure again. Jim, well, Jim, you know what a gym is. A gym is a place you go to exercise. But what you probably haven't thought about in detail is what you wear when you go to the gym. What do you wear when you go to a gym? I mean, if you were an ancient Greek. Nothing. Gym means naked. Just something to keep in mind next time you go. <laughs> The gymnasium was a place where young men would go to exercise in preparation for the competitions like the Olympic Games and things, and they would do that without any clothes on. <clears throat> so it was the naked, the place where you went naked. The gym means naked. So these are the naked seed plants. We'll explore what that means. It is a good description of how the seeds are structured here. We'll talk about that as we go on. So seed structure, we will, re <clears throat> excuse me, we will redraw the seed now that we did last time, starting from the center again. And what we're drawing here at the center, this weird shaped thing, is the embryo. And it's got different parts to it. And we'll learn technical names for these parts later on, but Let me just say that it's got these parts, the young root, stem, apex, and leaves. So the root stem, apex, and leaves. And we'll go over that again in much more detail later on. I just wanted to get you somewhat oriented to what I was drawing. And it's drawn in that funny upside down way for a reason we may get to later in class. Surrounding the embryo, there is a nutritive structure of some kind. I'm not sure yellow is going to work on my other diagrams for the same structure. We're just going to, we might have to change colors later, but for now we'll start with this yellow. <coughs> and this is a, so a nutritive tissue. Its nature di differs in the different groups. In the gymnosperms, it's the megagametophyte. In the angiosperms, it's different, and it's, it's a little more complex, so we're going to leave that aside for right now. So for right now, we'll just know in the gymnosperms that nutritive tissue surrounding the embryo is the megagametophyte. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because the embryo grows out of the megagametophyte. Surrounding the megagametophyte, there would normally be the megaspore, but the megaspore is gone by this time. It's been essentially reabsorbed. But there is, or at least we will treat its presence as existing, a remnant of the structure of the megasporangium. And so that's what I'm drawing in here now around the nutritive tissue.
Here's the Megas brand here. Around the megasporangium now, we have another structure that's unique to the seed plants. And this structure on the outside then is the seed coat. And that's where we left off last time. <coughs> so most of the seeds you know are from angiosperms and angiosperms have an additional covering around that. We'll talk about that in one second. <clears throat> but if you forget that outer, outer covering, for instance, in a peanut, don't, just, don't think about the peanut shell. Inside that peanut shell, there's a little, for roasted peanuts, there's that red, thin covering right around the meat of the peanut. That red, thin covering is the seed coat. Here is a difference now between gymnosperms and angiosperms. So we have on the left the gymnosperms. as typified by some of the cone-bearing gymnosperms, like the pines. And on the right, we have the angiosperms. <coughs> so you know the roots for angiosperms, right? I don't even have to tell you. Angium, box, and sperm, we did seed. So students who come in late, beware on Halloween. <laughs> Souls are tasty. <laughs> so on the gymnosperm side, we have the seeds, and here they are. And they are not enclosed in another structure. They are born on structures. They are born on scales. We'll call this for now a cone scale because it comes off of a cone, and in fact, a female cone. But they are not enclosed. They are just stuck on top of that, like we have seen sporangia on the top of sporophylls. It's similar, not identical, but similar. In the angiosperms, if we find the seeds, here is a fruit like a tomato. These are the seeds. And this is a fleshy fruit. Like tomato. So the seeds are enclosed in that fleshy structure in this case, in the tomato. Here we have a dry fruit, like a bean. And inside that bean, of course, you know there's the seeds, or if it was a pea, it would be the peed seed, the peas itself, and the peas in the pod. The pod is that extra structure that is enclosing the seeds. So the fruit is yet another structure around the integument. And we'll, when we talk about the angiosperms, we'll come back to that and talk about what that is and where it comes from. But for right now, we're talking about the naked seed plants, the gymnosperms, which do not have that extra seed around them, extra structure around them. So other characteristics that distinguish the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. The gymnosperms are all woody, which means that they produce secondary growth, which is growth in girth. Our lower vascular plants have gotten longer, but they haven't gotten wider. Now in the gymnosperms, we find plants that get wider, that also get wider. In the angiosperms, there are plants that are, are herbaceous, or they could be woody. So we have plants like tulips, 
which have no growth in girth, and we have plants like redwoods, which have huge amounts of secondary growth of wood that's produced. They're all, and, all within the group angiosperms. Angiosperms are incredibly diverse plants. We're gonna spend most of next semester in plant systematics talking about the diversity of the angiosperm. There's more than enough material to talk about a whole semester about just that group, the angiosperms. In fact, we talk two or three or four semesters about them. They're so, such a big group. So the gymnosperms woody, the, or angiosperms woody or herbaceous, the gymnosperms are all perennial. Perenni means throughout, perennial. So perennial means throughout the year. So these are plants that exist one year to another. They go out, they, they don't die at the end of the year. They persist from one year to another. In the angiosperms, we can have annuals. Those are plants which go from seed to seed in one year. They die, the plant dies in the year, produces seeds, the seeds overwinter and grow again. So a lot of your common lawn weeds, you might have noticed there are certain lawn weeds that only appear in the spring. They fruit, then they go away. They're not there for the rest of the year. That's typical annual plant. They're annuals, they can be biennials, which means two, bi means two. They, Biennials undergo that life cycle, except it takes them two years. The first year they stay vegetative, the second year they produce seeds, or they can be perennials. So those are our major differences then between gymnosperms and angiosperms besides the reproductive structures. The real differences are in the reproductive structures, which are major. Remember Selaginella. Well, it turns out that Selaginella's reproduction has a lot of similarities with the gymnosperms and with the angiosperms. So we're really gonna talk about the reproduction of all three of them now, but it's helpful that we've done Selaginella first because we remember some structure, some important features of Selaginella. For instance, Selaginella is heterosporous. And it's endosporic. All the gymnosperms and all the angiosperms, that means all the rest of the plants we're gonna do in this course are heterosporous and endosporic. Endosporic in a really unusual kind of way, but heterosporous and endosporic. So let's consider what in, let's consider a strobilus. And we'll start with the strobilus of Selaginella, so we'll just say that there's one strobilus. And that strobilus is going to have both the mega and the micro parts to it. That is, it's going to have the parts that are going to produce the male gametophyte and the female gametophyte. So we are going to have in that strobilus megasporophylls and microsporophylls. And those are going to have on them like megasporangia and microsporangia in the microsporophylls. Megasporangia have, well, let's be really complete, megasporocytes. And microsporocytes. In the microsporangia. Those are gonna give rise to after meiosis, the megaspores. See, we're just kind of writing the life cycle out here, except in a different form and the microspores. And because the gametophytes are endosporic, we're gonna find inside those spores, the megagametophyte, and the microgametophyte in the microspore.
Megagametophytes are going to have the Archegonia, which are going to have the egg, and the microgametophyte has the Antheridia, which have the sperm. That's all pretty standard. Shouldn't be any real surprises there. It's the same kind of structures we're going to find in the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Morphology is going to be different, but the same structures are going to be there. Now, there is one kind of difference between what's going on here in the gymnosperms and the angiosperms and in some selaginella, but this, what I'm going to say, is also true of some selaginella, and that is that on the female side, the megasporocytes, the megaspores, all of that, and let's just make that megaspores on to make it really clear, are enclosed, remain enclosed in the megasporangia. They do it through fertilization. So throughout, for, up through the process of fertilization, they are enclosed inside the megasporangia. That happens in Selaginella in some species too. Fertilization can actually take place inside the megaspore wall, inside the sporangia, in, in some, not in all, in some Selaginella. So that's why we use Selaginella here as a nice model for what's going on. It's gonna, that's going to take place in all of the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. On the male side, that's very similar, not exactly the same, but very similar. It's enclosed in the microsporangia till shed, and I'm going to talk about what that means is shed. Because these microspores, microgametophyte, antheridia, and sperm are now going to be given a special name. And that special name is something you've known, but you've never known what it was before. These are the pollen. This is the pollen. So our pollen grains are, now you've, got, now you've finally got a context to understand what a pollen grain is. It is an endosporic microgametophyte of the gymnosperms of the angiosperms. And that endosporic microgametophyte is going to be shed as a little package, and then we'll talk about what happens to it after it's shed. So we could say over on this left side, enclosed until pollen shed. Now that we know that that's called the pollen. Here's a picture of an ovule. This is not a great, um, especially on the right, it's not a great picture. But on the left, it's quite good. I just want to give you some orientations here to what an ovule is. The ovule becomes the seed. So the ovule is, in essence, the endosporic megagametophyte. It's a little more complex than that, but let me write that here. I'll say that it's approximately, the little tilde means approximately. <coughs> and endosporic megagametophyte. And of course, all the associated structures that go with it, megametophyte, the archegonia, the egg, and all that's, that's in there. So we can find that here. I'm not going to label everything here. We will come back to this diagram and label it later. Here is, that is the endosporic megametophyte in red. And around that, we'll label two things. I've forgotten what pick colors I used for these. Here we have 
the Mega Sprand unit. Over on the right, it's harder to see what these arrows are really pointing to. This, I believe, is the megasporangium, and it's got several, and that's megasporangium, and that's megasporangium, I believe, all those three. And then we have in the center, that is the endosporic megagametophyte. So we need to understand the structure of the ovule. And that's where we'll start next. We'll see what the structure of the ovule is. We're going to look at talk about what they develop into and think about the ploidy of these different structures in the ovule. So we're going to start with the center. And at the center, we've just said, is the megagametophyte. And I think I remembered, I hope, did I do the megagametophyte in yellow before? It was red. No, on the last one, it was red on the other one. Well, I can't do it in red because I've got to draw inside it now. So I'll go back to yellow. I will label that in a minute here. I think I better label it now. There's the megagametophyte. And inside that megagametophyte, we have archegonia and eggs. Now, what I'm drawing right now, these two ovules, those are going to be the eggs. The archegonia are surrounding them. I will draw the archegonia in in a second. And there's usually two eggs, two archegonia. And in many of the gymnosperms, there's two. The number doesn't matter to us. I'm just telling you, you're usually going to see two. So that's the egg. I'm going to switch colors to black. The archegonia are really thin. Try to draw a little peak at the top there to indicate that there is a neck. And that black, then, it's a single cell layer in these cases, that is the archegonia or archegonium. Just a little more. Okay, so the black line, you'll see in a minute, we'll be looking at some real pictures of these things and we'll see how this makes sense. Surrounding the gametophyte should be. If it's an endosporic gametophyte, what's around it? What surrounds it? Endosporic means inside the spore. And mm -hmm. so that means the thing around the gametophyte is the, must be my dementor ears don't work so well with this covering over it. Because I can't hear you. The inside the megasporangium, between the megasporangium and the gametophyte, Spore. There would be the spore wall. Now, the spore wall gets, you know, pretty crushed in this process. And so there's not much of it there. But we're going to put it in as a dashed line to remind us that there should be a megaspore wall here. And then outside that megaspore wall, we have the megasporangium. And I've got that in green now. These are not always uniform in thickness, these different layers, but I'm just trying to give you the basic idea here. And normally, that would be the end. The megasporangium would be the end. That would, megasporangium would be born on the megasporophyll. That's it. But in the gymnosperms and angiosperms, we have this weird other structure. We've got another structure around that that's going to turn into the seed coat. 
So we need to draw one more structure up there. And this structure I'm going to draw a little bit differently. I'm going to draw it with a hole at the top. So there's a hole there, and then it wraps around with a stalk at the bottom. And that is called the integument. And it becomes the seed coat. The other things, you pretty much know what they become in the seed. Should be straightforward. The archegoat, the egg is going to get fertilized, it's going to become the embryo, etc. But the integument that's new is going to become the seed coat. It's the same thing as the seed coat. And this thing, this new structure around this that's going to be the, the integument and the seed coat is part of the parent plant. It's part of that female parent parental plant. So it is diploid. The integument is diploid and the seed coat is diploid. It's a little bit of tissue that's wrapped around, extra protective tissue around the megasporangium. So everything below that is haploid? Nope. No. Let's do it between that. I'm not going to be able to use the co right color every time, but I'll grab a new color here for all of these. Oh, it's 2N. Seed code is 2N. Start with the easy stuff, the megagametophyte. That is easy stuff. N. The egg is. The archegonium is. The megasporangium. 2N. It's part of the parent. And of course, the megaspore wall is not cellular, so we don't really have a poiety there. So there will be more plodulus here when we have to look at the plodi of these different structures in the ovule and in the egg. And the tough ones to remember are the megasporangium and the integument seed coat. Back to our diagram. We can label some of our structures now. And I not going to remember all my colors. <clears throat> and we're never going to finish the class if I had to change them all again. Center, this is our megagametophyte. Mega this arrow is pointing to the archegonia and the eggs. I'm going to label them both. This striped structure is the megasporangium. And then I am going to color in the outer integument. And I think I used blue for that. The integument's a little hard to figure out here because it's got multiple layers. It's got two layers in this case. Notice I'm not covering, coloring that central layer there. And also notice up here it's thinner at the top. So that is the integument. And in this dying drawing, it is two layered. It can have other more layers. It's not how many layers it's got is not important to us. It has to do with the function of the seed, which we're not going to get into in this class. So just point out that it's got more than one layer in this case. As we said already, over on this side, this is the, in the center, we have the megagametophyte. On the outside, this layer, this is the integument. In between those two, and it's hard to tell exactly what they're pointing to, but as I said before, I think that this one, this one, and this one are all megasporangium. We're going to look at this in a number of different 
number of different um, drawings as we go on. Let's look at the inner origin of the integument, and then we'll take a break. So there are really no good clues about from extant plants about where the integument came from. If we just look at the existing plants, angiosperms and gymnosperms, we don't have any good intermediates. We have to look back at the fossil record. And when we look back at the fossil record, we start to see things where there are possible intermediates. And these are four, representing four different species um, <clears throat> from kind of pre-gymnosperm taxa, things like perhaps the seed ferns. And this is the oldest. And this is the most modern up here. And you can see in the most modern one, we have something like an integument. And there's a little hole at the top of the integument. I forgot to tell you what that was. That hole was called. It's called the micropile. You know, micro, small pile is orifice or hole. So it's the small hole. And we'll talk about what the micropile does, how that functions in a bit. For now, we can see in this older version we have some leaf-like structures that have that are present around the megasporangium, and this is thought to be the proto-integument. So you know it's kind of like the indusium in ferns. There's a little upgrowth around this reproductive structure, and that upgrowth then is going to, over time, it in different species now, not in this, this is a developmental sequence of the same species, we get in the integumentary lobes fusing and to find then this almost completely mature or completely like normal integument and then within this last one, a very similar to what we would see in gymnosperms today, integument. So this extra upgrowth from, probably from the megasporophyll, certainly from the megasporophyll. Take a break and we have to come back and talk about the male side or the pollen. So what is a pollen grain? It's an endosporic microgametophyte. enclosed in a spore wall. We'll say you make it really complete in a microspore wall. Okay, so an endosporic microgametophyte enclosed in a microspore wall. And this is the structure of a pollen grain here. This is the mature pollen grain. These show the stages of development. And by and large, we are not going to concern ourselves with development. We'll talk about it a tiny bit, but not very much, the development of the pollen grain. So we're mainly concerned with what the structure of that mature pollen grain is. And right now, all we really need to see here is that inside there are some multiple cells. Let me label the spore wall first. and then switch colors. And there is the endosporic microgametophyte. What's happening in our last diagram is that we're getting the endosporic gametophyte growing beyond the spore wall. So it's endosporic for a while, but then there is a little growth called a pollen tube that comes out 
and that pollen tube is going to deliver the sperm. So the pollen tube is a sperm delivery device. We'll talk more about that as we get into how these seeds and pollen grains function. But for right now, so there's the mature pollen grain, which is the endosporic, microgametophyte enclosed in that microspore wall. After it's shed, it is going to grow outside of it. This one does grow outside of that through the production of a tube, of a pollen tube, and that's going to deliver the sperm.